Don't you hate it when people use motion graphics to make things look cooler than they actually are? Hey, I'm Adam. Welcome to Tech Dive AV Club. And today we're in Movie Studio 17 Platinum, and we're going to talk about tech, specifically what you're doing wrong. So I get a ton of questions for both Vegas Pro and Movie Studio about text and how to highlight it and how to move it around, do things like you saw in the intro. And the common complaint is, let's go ahead and delete this picture and picture track if you're following along. Go to Media Generators, grab Titles and Text, and... We're going to drop it on above this. We got sample text here. And a lot of times, here's the complaint. People are like, I want to change the color. I want to highlight one thing. Or I want the word sample to move and not the word text. And when they do that, so when you hit this generate media button, it's really, it lets you pull up the editor here. And people see this editor and they see all the power it has, including all these animations. So every time you see a clock with a plus by it is a place you can animate it. That means you add keyframes to create motion and change. And we'll, we'll demonstrate that really fast. You can add this add keyframe button. And if you, if you don't have enough space, you can actually hit control and undock it there. Or just dra grab it out and undock it. I don't even think you have to hit control. And then here you can see what we're doing just a little bit better. You can click. This is a little timeline. This timeline takes up the whole length of the sample text. And you can click anywhere on it and hit create a new keyframe. And then where, when you're on that new keyframe, whatever changes you make will happen to that keyframe. So now we'll see a slow change to red right there at the beginning. What if we want it to be a faster change? Well, you can actually do things like copy this one where the key where the text is white if you go to the beginning here how the text is white you can copy that if you're if you're having trouble here you might want to toggle the sync cursor depending on uh, what works better for you but go ahead and copy this keyframe and then create a new keyframe and then right click and paste that and now you have another white keyframe which keeps the text white and then it more suddenly changes another color and the question is okay how do I change sample to one color and text to another or something like that and they, they I, I see people really distraught about this concept and the reality is is you can do or how do I change the font of one thing and not the other or whatever but the reality is it changes both of them every time you do something Maybe you can change the font of one text and not the other, but you can't really affect much more than that because anytime you make a change to the color or the outlining or the shadows or the, or the motion or the size, it changes both of them. And the simple solution is just hit Control-Shift-Q. Let's grab a sample text here. And let's pick a font. And... Let's pick a size, let's pick a place to put it. All right, so now we got sample text right there. And the question is, how do you get these to act independently? And the answer is exceedingly, exceedingly simple. Just select it, hit Control. Now you have a copy of it. Create, yep, hit Create New Copy, not Create a Reference. And now select this first one right here by hitting Generated Media. Get rid of the text, the word text. Select the second one. Get rid of the word sample. And then now put them over top of each other. And move them where you need to go. You can turn the grids on if you need help lining them up to keep them looking nice and pretty together. And there you go. Now you have sample text that actually, turn this grid back off, Actually, it looks like it's all one line. It looks like it's all one text, but you can control things independently. That lets you do cool things like this. Let you pop text up like that. You can put on a transition. So let's say you wanted it to fly in. You can just grab a video transition. Um, 3D fly in and out. Boom. See? You can independently affect things in that kind of way. It can fade in separately. Or... You can do things like where this one, we can do the color change trick that we did earlier, where this one changes color over time.
and text doesn't. So the last couple things I want to leave you with is, is this question is often paired with, with how to kind of move things around and stuff like that. And the answer is um, you can move things around with these keyframes too, but once you have everything separated like this, you can actually use your event pan crop. So as I've talked about in my animations tutorial, uh, animation is simple as we, as we kind of already showed. You can just make a subtle change, like a little zoom in here, and then at the beginning of this event pan crop, you'll see the whole field of view, and at the end of it, you'll see it, the field of view is going to zoom in. So let's watch this effect slowly over time. It zooms in like a little BuzzFeed video. So now if I want the same thing to happen to text, like I want something to move or something like that, you can actually independently animate it. So you can go here inside your event pan crop, and you can create new keyframes here where, let's say, this first keyframe, you want it to tilt. So now let's look at it. See how it's tilted there? And then on the second keyframe, let's say you want it to tilt the other direction. So now it kind of rocks back and forth. But the question is, how do you do this over and over again? Well, you can just hit Control and copy these keyframes just by dragging them. Make sure it's highlighted and copy the keyframe, dra drag the, the other keyframe behind it, and you'll go back and forth. And the more violent you want it to be, the close, just move these closer. You can also change the curve type by right-clicking it, the way it moves, whether it's fast or slow. But really, you get the most change by how far apart they are. See how that kind of bounces back and forth? Now that animates just that in particular frame. So the really cool thing about this though, there's an easier way to do this than, than doing it over and over and over again. Let's go ahead and delete all these keyframes here. I'm going to blow your mind. We're going to make this just a few frames. So I want this to shake back and forth. We're just going to make it about four frames. And then uh, three. Let's do three. And then hit this button. Wait, sorry. Hit the event pan crop button. And we're going to start with it being rotated slightly up. See that one keyframe there. And then we're going to use the control click where we drag it and copy it. Hit OK. And remember that top option. If you click the second option, it'll change all of these to match. And you do not want that to happen. Hit this event pan crop button again and rotate it down. And then now they'll do do. See how, how quick that was? Do do. But then you're like, oh, I have to do that over and over again. No, you don't. Because just hit control. Don't drag. Just hit control and click on both of them. And they'll both be highlighted. Then you can right click and copy. And now you can paste them as many times as you want. But the best way to do that is to actually hit control and B. That's control B as in control beta, control bow wow. That's what I mean. Control and B at the same time. And then you're going to need to select this top one again, create new copy. And I want to paste it 30 times. And then I want them to come up end to end. You can even add spacing if you want. But look, this is going to paste those in order 30 times in a row. So now watch. There we go. It bounces infinitely as much as I want. Super simple. I didn't have to sit there animating it all day. So... There you go. Those are some quick tips about animating text and kind of answering a lot of the questions that I see uh, at, on my text tutorial and really just on a lot of different tutorials. People have been asking me questions about this. So I really hope this helped you out. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. If you're new to editing, uh, I got all sorts of intro to editing videos on YouTube and also I got a new um, Udemy, I got a Udemy course that is all about intro to editing where you have follow along projects and it's more about editing theory. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.